Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Angel Peña and in today's class we will be working on a portrait painting. We will also go over the techniques used to make such a painting and the mediums that can be used. Now I know that making a portrait can be a scary thought. We want to do our best and I'm sure that we will do our best. So the first thing that we gotta do is to find inspiration. For example, looking for paintings and artists that we like. And of course, techniques to, to get our desired painting done. By doing this, we can get a better idea on how to start our painting. And in a sense, we are not starting from scratch. There are many different ways one can go about making a portrait painting. And also many shortcuts, depending on what we want to achieve and what we're trying to convey. Now, first, I want you guys to relax. I want you guys to be in the right mindset. This shouldn't be daunting. I will show you just how simple in a way painting can actually be. In painting, there are no actual rules set in stone. But it is essential to understand the basic principles. We must learn the rules to know what rules to break. And of course, making mistakes is part of the learning process. Even I make mistakes at this stage. Sometimes I even actually embrace those mistakes. Those are the things that sometimes make your painting a great painting. So in today's class, as I mentioned before, we will be working on a portrait. And the second step would be finding a subject, someone to paint. And you might be wondering who could that be? And the answer is simple. It can be anyone, anyone you want. But maybe sometimes you're thinking that no one is the right subject and you're not alone. Sometimes I find myself in the right, uh, in the same mindset. This is where looking for inspiration comes in handy. One artist that in a way made me aware of, of this is Gaspar Enriquez. He is a local from our lovely city. In his paintings, he portrays subjects that maybe at first glance wouldn't be, at least in my opinion, my first choice. Looking at his work made me realize that it is not the subject, but the way it is painted that makes a painting a great painting. I do inspire myself uh, with other painters such as Diego Velázquez. I like the way he painted the figures. There is an individual freedom to his brushwork. From afar you can't really see what's going on, but once you really get close to it, you're able to see that it's no more than uh, in a way, an orderly mess, right? He's really letting paint be paint. And that's what really, that's something that I really want to achieve in my work at least. So this is why, as I mentioned before, really looking into others' uh, others' work is really gonna help your own work, right? It's really gonna help you advance in your technique. In a way, in a sense, I'm using uh, their paintings as a blueprint to better understand how to go about on my paintings. Now, I really like photographing my subject. This gives me control of the lighting and the position and a lot of other aspects, right? So I have more control when I'm actually the one taking the pictures. And it also gives me a chance to really play with the way the subject is dressed, right? I can dress them up in a similar way to how maybe Diego Velasquez's subjects were uh, dressed, right? So it is a time for you to like play around really with materials, with position, lighting, as I mentioned before. So now that we are happy with our subject, you gotta think about the size of our canvas. And for this class, I really want you guys to keep it small. You really don't want to overwhelm yourselves uh, with something too big. We want to keep we want we want to keep uh, the focus on the painting process. We want to get familiar with this first. So for this class, I'm actually going to be working on two uh, different size canvases. The first one is going to be more of a study, right? So this is going to give me a chance for me to get familiar with uh, the proportions and the subject and just kind of like where the colors are in in the canvas. So also you really want to be comfortable with the size, you know, if you want to go with, with something bigger then be my guess. Just make sure that you are comfortable with that size. So now we have our canvas, we have our picture, so pretty much it's time to start preparing the surface. 
for this step, you do have different choices. You can draw it freehand, draw a big grid, or even predict it if you have the proper equipment. This is really all up to you. Doing it freehand does create a unique painting, but getting your proportions correct might be a bit uh, more difficult if you don't have the experience to help you out. It might cause some of us to feel that we are no good at art. Now, let me tell you guys that this shouldn't stop you, right? Uh, you don't necessarily need to be a, a great, uh, great at drawing in order to actually be a great painter. So this is why maybe drawing the grid can be a choice for you guys. So the main colors that we are going to be using for the skin tones are French Ultramarine, Titanium White, Alizarin and Crimson, Yellow Ochre and Burnt Umber. These are the most common colors when painting a portrait. But if you want, of course, you can always add more to the palette, be my guess, you know, the more the merrier. So now it is time to take those colors out. So if you guys have uh, both acrylics and oils, that'll be awesome. But this painting can, uh, can just be done with oils, uh, but acrylics uh, is an option. And the reason I'm using acrylics is because there is a general rule which is known as fat over lean. In other words, our thin layers must be laid first before any thick paint. You gotta remember that oil paint, oil paint takes time to dry and it must also be able to breathe. Painting your thin layers first will ensure that the painting will last for many years. It'll prevent uh, any cracking in the future. Keeping this in mind, there are different types of mediums that can be used to help you in the painting process. And there are many indeed, but for this class, I'll cover only a few. The first thing to understand is that our paint is already suspended in a medium. Though straight out of the tube, sometimes it might be a little too thick uh, for some of the techniques that we're trying to achieve. Um, so this is the reason why we sometimes do want to mix our paint with a bit of medium. Mediums change the properties of paint and we can make we can make it thicker and thinner. It is rather simple. For example, I use mostly mineral spirits as a way to make my paint run much easier, but we can also use liquid. The problem with liquid is that it smells a bit, uh, the smell is a bit overwhelming. You know, it's uh, very strong. And it is best to be in a well ventilated area. It is also important to remember that mineral spirits, all it's all that it's doing is weakening the bonds and so we don't want to overuse it. Now, liquid as well as mineral spirits helps in speeding up the drying process of oils. Just be mindful of how much you are mixing into your paint, a little really does go a long way. You really don't need to add that much medium to your paint, just enough to really make it uh, more workable, you know. It's better to be missing more medium then go overboard with it right you can only go one way with uh, your medium it's either you need to add more or you already went over it overboard now we can also extend the drying time by using for example linseed oil it all depends on the effects you are trying to achieve honestly I try not to mix my paint with too many mediums as I think that the paint already is good enough straight out of the tube. Now let's talk about our brushes. And they are a very important asset as they are the primary tool we'll be using. And so the question is what kind of brushes do I need? That is really all up to you. For the most part I use uh, filberts, flats and rounds and I vary the sizes uh, depending on the stage that I'm on. For the beginning stages, usually I start with uh, large brushes and as I continue developing more and more detail, then my brushes start getting more and more uh, smaller. So another tool you guys can use is your palette knife. Though it is mostly used just to mix your paint, you can also use it to um, mix your paint on the canvas, right? To push paint around here and there. Uh, again, it all depends on what you guys are trying to achieve. You can also use the, the butt of your brushes also. So the same way you would use your palette knife to push paint, uh, you can use the butt of your brush to push paint around, right? So 
maybe you don't have a palette knife around, right? So you can just use your brushes, right? They're very versatile. And now that we have covered some of these uh, basic principles, it is time to begin working on our small study. This will help us get familiar with a bit of the color mixing and also locate our warm and cool tones. And also just to loosen up, you know, to relax, to really get into the painting mood. It is similar to preparing for a test. If you study, you will do good. And if you don't, well, you know what happens. By doing a study, we can become better prepared. So let's begin. So in this study, you're gonna get a basic idea on how to go about making a face, a portrait, right? So basically what I'm doing here is I'm drawing some lines, lines on my reference picture. And I'm also drawing those lines on my canvas, right? And then from there, I pretty much uh, I like to start with the eyes. And whatever size I draw the first eye, I use it as a reference to draw the rest, rest of the face, to draw the nose, to draw the mouth. You know, everything in a way is has a relation with the rest of the face. I use it to measure different parts of the, of the face. And then once I'm happy with it, um, then I'm gonna start working with my paints. So for this small painting, I'm keeping my palette very limited. I'm using mostly, I think it's titanium white, raw sienna, raw uh, um, burnt umber, uh, excuse me, others are in crimson, uh, and a bit of ultramarine, French ultramarine. And I like to start uh, in a middle tone, something that's not too dark and not too white. A lot of uh, other artists like to work by painting their dark tones first, but I guess at least for me this is not necessary. It's really all up to you guys. Um, so then I start working on my warm tones and my cool tones. And talking about the warm and cool tones. Basically, your warms are all your yellows, your reds, your oranges, and your cool tones are your blues, your greens, your violets. So having that in mind, uh, as you can see on my reference picture, uh, most of the, the face is under shadow, right? So only part of the shoulder is being hit by direct sunlight. So having this in mind, this means that most of the face will actually be a uh, cool tone in in a sense so I am mixing some of those colors with some ultramarine uh, with a bit of green if you have uh, green for the most part I'm just uh, I like mixing it with blue or violet as well as I did with the lips and I just continue painting I'm not really worried about making the perfect painting. This is, as I said before, just a study. I want to get familiar with the composition. Where are my dark tones and my light tones, all my highlights, all my shadows. This is just like studying for a test. Now I know, or I have a better idea of what I'm gonna be painting, what colors I'm gonna be mixing. And it's really gonna make painting the bigger paint, painting a lot easier on me. Now the hair, I, and you're gonna be able to see it, I use uh, my palette knife to push some of the paint, as you'll see later in the video. So just a brief introduction into how you can use your palette knife in non-conventional ways. Right now I'm just uh, 
working on all the the little details, kind of like just to bring my painting a bit forward. All the tiny dark tones, you know, all those little lines that define the face, as well as all the little highlights. And that pretty much wraps up this um, study. I really don't need to finish it. Uh, I just wanted to get a sense of what I'm getting into. So once you're happy with your study, then it is time to move on to the bigger painting.